This Black History Month, I wanted to take the time to highlight some of the living history in our very own state. I visited the Richard Allen School, an historic black school in Georgetown, Delaware, to talk to one of its former students. I sat down with Miss Peggy Trott to talk about growing up in a segregated Sussex County, her time at the Richard Allen School, and her extraordinary life as a community leader. We talked about preserving our legacy, acknowledging the past, and embracing the future. I hope that you'll take the time to watch my conversation with Miss Peggy, learn more about our state's history so that you can see how far we've come and working together, how far we can go. And we just really, Miss Peggy, appreciate you doing this and taking the time to do it. Um, you know, we're celebrating Black History Month, yes. and a lot of times people don't realize the history that is right beneath their feet or right within their own state or neighborhood. And so um, I thought it would be a really good idea to be here at the Richard Allen School that has such history tied to it. And we have living legends right here in our own community, and you are one of them. Oh, well, and so you. we want to. First of all, just say thank you so much for your community service. Um, you are well, well known, well regarded and well respected. And it's really because of the service that you have provided to your friends, your neighbors, um, church members and uh, the community at large. And so I really just wanted to spend some time talking about this historic school. Um, a lot of people don't really know about the era that we had here in our own state. You know, a time of Jim Crow laws and the fact that, you know, people were going to schools that was, you know, segregated. And so I was hoping that as a Sussex Countyan, um, as a Delaware native, correct? Yes. Were you born in Delaware? Yes. Born in Delaware. Okay, tell Georgetown. me. Georgetown. So you were a Sussex Countyan. You grew up here um, most of your life or yes. all of your life? Yes. Tell us a little bit about what it was like growing up for you and specifically what it was like going to the Richard Allen School. Well, when we, um, I've lived in seven or eight different spots in Georgetown. Okay. And it was very prejudiced mm -hmm. and it was terrible mm -hmm. for black people in this town because we couldn't go uptown after a certain time without the white people jumping on us. So we had to take protection. When we got across the railroad track by prospect, we had to carry protection with us. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes the white guys would come down here and make trouble. And the black guys all teamed up and ran mm -hmm. them back uptown. Mm -hmm. And it was just a mess that you couldn't even walk uptown in peace without being called a black man. Wow. And we couldn't go in the restaurants. We could buy their food, but we couldn't eat there. They had a hole on that extended through the outside of the building. Mm -hmm. And that's where they took your order outside. Mm -hmm. And they would pass your food through the hole uh, of the building. And that's how you got your uh, food when you were dealing with the white restaurants. And you could uh, work for them. Mm -hmm. You could clean their houses, cook for them take care of their kids, but you couldn't mingle with them. Right. And you couldn't go like in the bathrooms, the same bathrooms, they had a white only and black mm -hmm. only. And if you were seen going in one of them, the cops would have get you. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of times you had just had to be careful where you went. Right. And uh, we couldn't go to the white school and play. We, could, we weren't even allowed on the playground. So this was our safe haven. Now, around to what play time, Richard Allen. What, around what time of, of, was that, That like in terms of the dates that, that you remember well, growing up? And that I you was have born in 1945. Members? Okay. And this was, um, well, well into the 70s. Wow. Because wow. I went away and I came back and a lot has changed. Mm -hmm. And although they had integrated my high school, mm -hmm. well, they did away with my high school. Mm -hmm. And they were going through integration. But. Sussex County has not arrived, right. and it was still a lot of things going on that uh, you could go in the uh, bathrooms mm -hmm. 
and you could go in the restaurants. But they would look at you funny because when I came back in the 70s, mm -hmm. uh, I ordered uptown to the little pizza spot. I ordered, I took my oldest daughter there to get a pizza and they wouldn't wait on me for a while. And I said, well, everything is integrated, so why don't I get service like everybody else? They went around all the white tables. And we were sitting there waiting and waiting. I said, well, I'm going to get ready to leave if they don't want to wait on me. So the girl finally came and took our orders. But we seemed to be the last one getting waited on, last one getting our orders. So I, it's a lot of things that happen in Sussex County that, the black people still were not uh, entitled to. Let me ask you this. You know, first of all, you share the fact that we know laws were passed, yes. whether it was the Civil Rights Act or the Voting Rights Act in, you know, um, 64 and 65, but that it was slow to actually for people to feel yes. the real impact of those changes in the law. And, you know, for you, even having an education, I mean, you valued education enough to go on and go beyond high school and get, you know, to go to college. Um, you studied mathematics, which is an area now where you're trying to encourage everybody to get into STEM and to really, you know, focus on the future. Talk to me about how you survived what were the things that you did that kept you encouraged to keep going to to even take those jobs that you knew you were overqualified for but you, you took that job and then you were able to move up and do and, and and expand your career talk a little bit about the things that kept you going and the things that encouraged you well i didn't have a good family life. Mm -hmm. My mother and father separated when I was in the fourth grade, and it seemed like it turned my world upside down, because mm -hmm. I loved my father, and it wasn't his uh, doing. He didn't want to, but it happened, and so I was subject to abusive sort of stepfather. He was abusive because um, he didn't really act like he liked my mother's kids. We were all born before he came along. Okay. And he treated us bad. He treated my mom bad, but she stayed with him. So through that, we had to learn to protect ourselves through racial discrimination stuff. We still had to learn to fight to protect ourselves. And the community rallied behind us because we were sort of like one tight-knit uh, community. Mm -hmm. all, all of these streets in Georgetown, we stuck together. Mm -hmm. Whenever somebody needed something, and we had it, we shared it. And we could go over everybody's house and we eat and they would take care of us kids mm -hmm. just like we were blood relatives. Mm -hmm. So that kind of helped me because uh, going through that, I had low esteem and I had, I thought we were the poorest family in Georgetown mm -hmm. because mom, it was five of us. I was number four, the youngest girl. My oldest sisters had, had children. Mm -hmm. So mom was strict on me because she didn't want me to have babies. Right. And I just thought, well, why mom so strict on me? You know, right. why wouldn't she strict on my sisters? Right. So I later learned that she just wanted me to do better than the rest. Because mm -hmm. I was the first, uh, first to graduate from high school. Wow. First one to graduate from college. Mm -hmm. So my oldest brother, he dropped out in the 10th grade. So she wanted a lot from me. Right. And I was kind of a shy kid, mm -hmm. but I was very smart. Mm -hmm. So she seen something in me right. and she wanted, she didn't want me to just have babies at an early age right. and not being able to fulfill any dreams. Right. So, you know, I, um, I count my neighborhood, mm -hmm. all the mothers that had kids that played with me, right. they sort of took me in, mm -hmm. even at the times that I thought we had it so bad. I cried sometime and I said, we got to get out of this mess mm -hmm. because I said, I don't want to have my kids doing, putting cardboard in the shoes, which I did because mom couldn't afford the shoes, but we were never hungry. Right. I didn't appreciate this really until I got in high right, school because right, right. I said, I walked around, we cut up cardboard boxes and I sold wore out, mm -hmm. you know. 
But one thing she always instilled us, she never stopped us from going to church. Yeah. And yeah. she always bought me church outfits mm -hmm. and church shoes, but you could only wear them to church. Right. I had three pair of shoes. Right. I had a pair of casual shoes, which I put the cardboard in. Uh -huh. I had a pair of sneakers to play in. Mm -hmm. And I had a pair of church shoes, which was pretty, but I go wear them to school or right. everything. Right. So she always uh, let us go to church. Right. And in church, we were taught that Christ was love. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really hate any white people. And I couldn't understand why they hated us because we hadn't done any dang tools. I said, if anything, we ought to hate them mm -hmm. because they're the ones that did all the dirt to us. And we played with some of them. And mm -hmm. at times, the same ones we played with at times wouldn't play with us when other people was around. So I didn't understand that. But through it all, I had great teachers. I had great teachers you here. You just read my mind. I was just going to uh, ask about the teachers. Mr. Evans, Miss Mason, she was a nice lady. She taught uh -huh. me first and second grade, Miss Moore. But they never taught us to hate people. Mm -hmm. And they always instilled the value of education. Right. So you will not get anywhere unless you're educated. Right. And if right. you want to get out of your slump, you need mm -hmm. to be right. educated. You started here at Richard Allen, then to Jason, Jason. and then Delaware State, State College. And at Richard Allen, you got that foundation. Yes. That that really prepared you for the future education. Yeah. And and I'm curious, what was the day like? Like when you woke up in the morning, what happened? And and you start start young, start from when you were young. Did you walk to school? Did you take a bus to school? Did you where it was what was life like for you going to school, you know, here at, at Richard Allen? Well, for Richard Allen, I lived, I started up there by the railroad track. Okay. We walked to school. Mm -hmm. We walked the whole years of Richard Allen. Mm -hmm. And um, Was it a group of you? Was it your siblings? Well, you walked from your house. Uh -huh. You didn't have to have a group. You just got to school on time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So everybody, you know, I might get here earlier than somebody uh -huh. else, but you just you didn't have weight on anybody to mm -hmm. walk. So we walked to Richard Allen. Mm -hmm. And when we got here, I mean, it was like a little bit tough, but it wasn't bored. Mm -hmm. It wasn't bored. Some people felt being in school and the teachers on your back to work. Mm -hmm. Some of them didn't like it, but I didn't mind it. Right. Because I really wanted to be in school that I was home. Mm -hmm. Because the home wasn't that pleasant. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot, if you stayed home, it was a lot of work. You had to do all the work. By the time, the, and, and I said, no, I don't want to stay home and do all the work. So I didn't need to stay home whether I was sick or not. Yeah. I came I came to school. And I didn't, I liked school because of, me and the teachers got along real good. So beyond the teachers and the principal, who were your heroes at that time? I kind of, when we were reading in high school, we were reading um, like Black history. Mm -hmm. I admired all that Fred Douglas, Harriet Tubman, Richard Allen had done. And I said, wow. You know, I've always been fascinated with black history. Mm -hmm. And I said, wow, they risked their lives for us. Right. And I figured I could do better. Right. That with all that they have done, I didn't want their work to go in vain. Right. And I said, you know, we I can't just cry the blues, say, woe is me because I didn't have a good life mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, my daddy wasn't there. So my daddy wasn't there either. Right. But I still wanted to uh, excel. Right. I wanted to do better. I wanted to get out of the slump that we're in. I didn't want to live in the big raggy housing all right. all year long. Yeah. So it, it depends on your mindset. Right. And, the, and the teachers, they helped me. Right. A lot of times they would tell me they knew if I wasn't thinking right. They they would just tell me, you know, what's, what's it like? Yeah. And um, I would talk to them. And I said, well, this is not right, you know, and, and they knew certain things weren't going on. So if, if you could encourage young people today, what would be your message to young people today who may be struggling, may not know what, what where they're going in life, may, you know, um, just be going through a tough time or just need to be uplifted and, and and know about, you know, what their future holds for them, what would you say to young people today? Well, I try to see, uh, ask them about what they're going through. I try to get a, a feeling of what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And some I might tell you that, well, mama's on this or drug. 
because unless you really know what they're going through, you can't help them. Mm-hmm. So I try to talk with them, let them trust me enough to let me know what's going on with them. So I try to work with them to tell them, well, you don't have to stay in this rut. Right. You know, you don't have to stay where you are. You can make a difference. You can make a difference to help your parents. And I try to show them love because a lot of them need love nowadays. They're looking for love in various places that they're not getting it. And so you got to show them love. And I do, and I try to invest time with them. If they need something, I try to help them to get it. If I don't have it, I'll tell them where to get it. Right. And I try to, you know, help them to get involved. I believe. And if the young people are involved in good things in the community, the church, and school, that they won't think about these other things that they will try to do do good, and they'd be wanting to do good. So I just try to sit down with them, find out what their needs are. Why are you feeling this way? You know, and uh, so. And whatever they do, I go from there. Yeah. I go I know, from there. I know you're known as a Miss Announcement in the community. <laughs> Why did they call you Miss Announcement? I like to know. I've always been a person like to know. Uh-huh. I don't like to be ignorant and uh-huh. have things happen around me that I'm not aware of. Mm-hmm. Because the Bible says God's people perish because of lack of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And I feel if you're going to help somebody, you got to know what you're doing. Right. You got to get some knowledge because I don't know everything. Right. But maybe this person knows something. I take a little bit from them, a little bit here, and I try to share it. I've always tried to share to help people. Right. And I don't believe you can help people if you're just sitting in your house not doing anything. Right. And you're not involved in anything. Because there's a lot. God might send somebody by that can build your future for you. And if you're just, well, I don't care. That's that's their business. No, you can't learn. You can't grow that way. So I try to keep abreast of things going on. I like culture things. I like gospel things. You know, I like things in the community. So I try to get involved. Not because I like it. Not really to be nosy or nothing uh-huh. like that, but I just like being involved. But people know if they need to know something, they can call yeah, you. Yeah, they always they call me. What's uh-huh. going on? Or is this happening? Right. And nine times out of ten, I can tell them. Uh-huh. So, nine times out of ten, that's pretty yeah. good. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, tell me, why is it important to preserve the legacy of the Richard Allen School? I know the the Richard Allen Coalition has come together and has worked to make this a historic site and. Um, have been, you know, trying to make sure that we are, are raising the resources to be able to preserve it. But talk about why it's important to preserve the legacy of the Richard Allen School. Well, you see, Richard Allen was not only a place of education. This was our playground. And if you go outside, you know, it's four streets here. When I was younger, in like the first and second grade, they were dirt. And we played in the streets. We didn't have big backyards, so we couldn't play in the house. So we had to play ball and stuff in the streets. And so it got a little dangerous, got a little costly because we broke out windows of cars and houses. Mm -hmm. So we had to come to Richard Allen to save our parents some money. So we had the freedom that even after school that we could come over here and play. We didn't have sidewalks. It was very dangerous because cars rode up and down this road. So if you walk on the dirt, a car would fly by you. You had to jump over. So it was very dangerous walking the streets at certain times. And so when you come over to Richard Island, you could come over and swing. We would meet and talk. And we just sometimes on weekends, we played ball. We come over here. We had the Negro League coming over here on weekends. Uh, my cousin Darrell, they had a, a boys team, well, a men's uh-huh. team. Uh-huh. We had a girls team, and we would play from town to town. Oh, wow. This was on Saturday. We had little barbecues. Uh-huh. This was our safe haven. Right. This right. was our playground, and it's important because all on these streets, they have nowhere to play. Uh-huh. If the kids don't have Richard Allen to come to, you have nowhere safe to play. So when you think about the Richard Allen School, I I hear you saying it represents the past, the present, and the future. Future, It's a rich history and legacy 
that allowed people to develop and have a good foundation to go on even to higher education and to, to maybe start a business or be a strong community member. Presently, it houses um, different community activities because yes. I know I've been here for some of the community activities. Yes. And then hopefully it will be here for future generations to remember where we've come from. Yes, yes. yes. Well, thank you so much yes. for taking the time to sit down with us and share this history, share your own personal story and your own personal history. And thank you for being such a public servant for our communities. Thank you, yes. Ms. Peggy.